and the CEO and co-founder of Boundless Media, the book author of uh, We're All Marketers. And overall, my, my passion is pretty simple. It's uh, I, I love being helpful. And today that's done through communication and marketing. Uh, so every single day I deal with who's your ideal client and client personas and how do you go about finding them and communicating them online. So really excited to jump into this today because this is what I do day in and day out. And I understand how frustrating it can be. Like you have this idea and you know, there's someone out there that could really benefit from it, hearing it. You just need to connect it, right? But there's so much nuance and uh, frankly, there's no clear path up until yeah. today <laughs> uh, of doing that. So that's, that's what we're going to be talking about today. Um, yeah, that's, I, I don't know if you have any uh, follow-up questions about me or my background or anything like that. Uh, well, what you mentioned that uh, marketing was not what you were doing before. So how did you, how did you kind of get into that whole realm? Because I mean, I just from the, the, the past two years that I've been learning how to do marketing and stuff for like my business and applying that to my book, there's a lot that goes into that. So how did you get sucked into that, that black hole? <laughs> yeah, I got obsessed with the startup ecosystem. So love the idea of taking this idea and raising money and then taking that into the real world to being um, you know, unicorn company. I love that concept. I think a lot of us uh, enjoyed, you know, the Facebook movie, uh, social network, and it was like, wow, we can build anything we really want using technology. So for me, it was, wow, where do I fit into that equation? Now you don't want me being a coder. Like I understand it, but you don't want me doing it. You don't want me to be on the logistics side or uh, legal side. So that really live, you know, leaves you with business development uh, and marketing. And that's where I found my home. I figured, you know, if I, I love talking to people and I love communicating, so like perfect fit. Um, and my book was geared at, okay, how do you take someone who has no idea what, what they're doing and give them a clear path to understand what you need to know to be a marketer? And then from there, that's when the iteration comes in, but you have to understand the foundations. Uh, and myself and Boundless, that's what we live and breathe by is if you don't know your foundations, i.e. who you're talking to, you can't be successful marketing your business or idea or book. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you, you, you have to know those things. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, uh, otherwise you're just gonna uh, potentially spend hundreds or hundreds, uh, if not thousands of dollars, um, on a bunch of marketing stuff that, you know, all the, the, uh, YouTube guru ads <laughs> tell you, uh, <laughs> So um, let's let's dive into your presentation and uh, let's let's learn how to do it um, successfully based on what you've uh, found and uh, experienced over the last uh, what you said four years ago. I started getting the marketing in 2017, so about four years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm excited. It's and this is especially great for anyone who wants to be that uh, you know kind of key driver of business growth. So, and at the end we'll, we'll ask questions, but um, let's kind of get started with this. So today we're gonna to break this down into a little bit more about who I am and how that particularly can be relevant to you. Uh, a little bit about my background. Who is your ideal client? Next steps and actually how do you move from theoretical like client to an actual working persona that you can apply today. And at the end we'll have questions. So a little bit about me again, we'll kind of speed through this. The author of Rural Marketers, co-founder of Boundless Media and public speaker, and all those the uh, book has enabled me to, to do. So why is this important? So I actually co-founded a company back in 2017 called Packpack. It was a mobile application business. And on the left-hand side is my current company, Boundless Media. Now, one of them is succeeding, Boundless Media. I mean, one, one of them failed, Packpack, because I did not understand who my customer was. So this is incredibly important because you mentioned a couple hundred of thousand dollars. We spent more than a couple thousand dollars and hundreds and hundreds of hours on Packpack. And then done the same thing for Boundless. But Boundless is very, very different because we know one key thing, who our ideal client is. Now there's people who are not your perfect client. There's some people who are almost your perfect client. But what you and I need to figure out is who's that ideal client? Who, who in the world of millions and millions of for potential buyers, do we go talk to and invest more time with them than anyone else? So this is what I want for you at the end of the presentation. I want you to have a key sentence just like this. 
So for Boundless Media, we help CEOs or CMOs at software businesses who do more than $1 million of revenue each year and then need consistent leads. Now, if you were just to break this out, CEOs and CMOs, that's a persona of a very specific business, software businesses. They don't just sell art. They don't do anything like that. They're so, specifically software businesses. Some key characteristics. They do over a million dollars in a year. That means they're not the newest company, but they're not the oldest company. And there's a specific problem that we're solving for them, that they need more consistent leads. That's what we do. Now, if we just strip this away, ignore that one right now, you follow this simple pattern, the need, business type, characteristics, and decision makers. If you follow these step-by-step, step, you got great clarification on who your client is and you can go attack them online. So first things first, a lot of businesses don't understand the actual need that they're solving. So to really understand where in business you fit. Now in marketing, there's so many ways I can go. I can go website development. I can go social media content. I can go podcasting. There's so many things that I can go do. That's why it's so important for me to I idealize and really create a need and solve a solution to solve that need. So the first thing is, what's that problem that you're solving for? Because you can solve for any of those, bad websites, bad content, whatever. In my case for Boundless, it was people don't have a consistent way to generate more business. That's a problem that we're solving. Them, what's in it for them? Like, why should they care? A pretty website's great, but is it going to get them somewhere? For my audience, no. So you have to answer the question, what's actually in it for them? Now, if you're running any type of business, whether it's consulting or uh, outsourced uh, technology services, whatever that is, if you can say, I save you money, I make you money, or I can do both, you're in a good spot. For our clients, we make them more money. That's why they go with us. But you have to figure out what's actually in it for them and be able to communicate that. And this is a key, key point. We all know AR and all these experiment blockchain, all these experimental technologies are going to be impactful one day. But you have to answer the question, why right now is this important? So for boundless media, this is the example we're going to go with. The problem we solve is inconsistent leads to make them more money to grow their business right now. So if you can answer those questions, you fulfilled one of the key problems that you'll encourage or encounter down the way, which is the need that you solve. Oops, I don't need the one. There you go. So how do you identify the need? Great, I have this idea, I'm gonna start a business, I'm gonna write another book, I wanna do something. Where can I actually go to find out what that problem is that I can solve? Google. I just typed this in yesterday. What problems do businesses have with marketing? You can see challenge one, lack of leads. Great, Boundless Media addressed it in this point, the problem. And you can do the same thing for anything that you're doing. Whatever your book or idea or business philosophy is, you can find it using Google. You can also go to Quora.com. You can type in the same type of question and there'll be tons of other people answering and asking the very same question. Next is that business slash reader type. Now you have a problem that you're solving for. In this case, leads and lead generation. Now you have to make sure who are you solving it for? Do you wanna help lawnmower businesses? Do you wanna help cleaners? Do you wanna help technology businesses? This is where you can gain a lot of clarity. So first thing I always say is what industry are they in? Like I said earlier, we're in the software technology space, but maybe you're in the nonprofit space, maybe the food space, whatever that is, identify the industry that you wanna target. Then look at key numbers. We don't put numbers against something. How big is the company? How much money are they making? How much money do they wanna make? Those type of questions. Again, in our example, we help businesses over $1 million. That's a key attribute that when I reach out to someone, if they only make $20,000, might not be a great fit for us, but they make over a million, then we can continue talking. Then you have to ask, what focus does that business have? Is it business to business like we do? Is it business to consumer or is it direct to consumer? And there's so many other ways, but answering this question will gain a cl much clearer avenue on who you're talking to. And you can find that from review sites. So let's say that you've decided that you want to solve 
lead generation problems like boundless media, you can go to review sites and type in lead generation companies or technology companies. And you can find businesses just like these. You can see how big they are, how much their average deal size is and who they focus on right there. And this can be done on Yelp, this can be done on Google as well, or whatever industry review site there is. Here's a couple more ideas. If you're targeting software companies, there's websites like Clutch, G2, or Captera. If maybe you want to target startups, there's TechCrunch, Crunchbase, Angel.co. And these are just small, small examples. Again, go to Google, type in that business and type in reviews, and you'll be able to find hundreds if not thousands of different review sites. Start there against user-generated content. You can also go to job boards. So let's say that you wanna help a cybersecurity company with their marketing. You can find exactly what that company is looking for to solve right here. You can find out the business type that they are. All of that is quantitative and qualitative data that will help you. Or let's say that you wanna target other marketing agencies like the VP of sales and marketing. You can see exactly what they need and how to be successful to them. And there's a ton of them. There's Indeed, ZipRecruiter, Monster, and again, dozens and dozens of industry specific job postings that you can go look at. Again, this is all pertaining to that customer that you think you wanna help. LinkedIn, great. Let's say that you wanna help technology businesses, computer software businesses. By using LinkedIn Sales Navigator, you can type in you want companies in the US who are in this field and doing over a million dollars. And there's 3,000 different businesses that you can potentially help right here. Now we move into more specifics. So you're, we want characteristics that make, make it apparent that you are going to be a good fit. I always make a joke on sales calls where I say, is your business uh, a B corporation that only sells ice cream? Well. Great, if you know that you only need to target B corporations to sell ice cream, you can get better and easier at reaching those people. But if not, you can use specifics that they have. And the more you research on job review sites and Google, you'll start noticing patterns that they have. For us, startups are really good, but more mid-sized established companies tend to do a little bit better, right? You must also like it. I've worked with dozens and dozens of industries before. And there's some that I just don't fit well into. It's okay to say I fit all, uh, it makes sense to, to work with them, but if the criteria and your love isn't aligned, don't go with it. So make sure that the characteristics and businesses that you choose, you actually love working with them because I can tell you, especially starting any business and I, I bet we can all have those ideas. If you don't love the person and love the work, you're going to burn out and you're not gonna achieve the results that you want. You identify the perfect business. You know exactly what industry they're in, what their problem is, and you have the solution that is going to make their life a million times easier. But if you can't get into the door and pass the gatekeepers to the decision makers, you will never be able to have a successful business. But first you gotta tell me who the decision makers are. For Boundless, it's CEOs and CMOs. So chief executive officers and chief marketing officers. In this case, for you, who is that key decision maker that will make the actual purchase? Now, let's say you're selling not a service, maybe a product. Maybe your product is a new computer. Does it make sense to sell to the CEO? Maybe, maybe they care, but maybe it'd be better to sell to the chief technology officer. Maybe you're selling a software that helps manage your warehouse. Again, CEO might be a good call, but the chief operating officer might be even better or at bigger companies, VP of supply chain or whatnot. So know exactly who the is going to be kind of signing that check. Next, next what will, you know, what, what will get them to consider us, right? To, by knowing exactly who you're targeting, you, you have the ability to get very custom. So, why should the VP of sales care about your new software? Well, because you know he's a VP of sales, he cares about growth, bringing in money and making his time you know, work a lot better for him. That's a lot of it. And that's more different of a conversation than if I were to talk to a CEO 
because a CEO might only care about the future and planning. So what gets them to consider us? What in your message can be unique to them? And how, how do you reach them? Is it through social media? Is it through email? Is it through direct mail? Is it through a carrier pigeon? Whatever that is, you've got to figure out how that decision maker actually consumes their news. The reason I brought up a lot of technology websites in the beginning is a lot of our clients are on websites that are geared towards more technology and startup news. So if I put an ad out there versus an ad on CNN, they might be much more likely to see it and engage with it and then convert. So how do you reach them? This is an example, I changed the name, but this is exactly a client that we signed last week. So John Smith, he's a CEO of a technology startup. This company is between one and 10 people. They do over a million dollars in sales and they're wanting to grow. He's a great brand, but all of his business comes from word of mouth and he doesn't like that. He wants more consistency. But John is really active on LinkedIn and by my research, he emails a lot of different people. So I can kind of answer all those questions, the who, what, why here. So this is good, Nico. We, you sold me on your philosophy and, and balance and whatever you guys do. How does this relate to you? Step one, you need to be able to create a solution to a problem that this industry actually needs. Two, figure out who's the best business to reach out to and how can you do that? Find key characteristics of those businesses that you actually want to work with. If you don't like startups and you like more eco-friendly brands, don't worry about the startups. Focus on the brands that you want. And then fourth, who's the best person to reach out to? And how can you do that again and again and again? If you can get the one, two, three, four of this timeline done, it's still going to be a lot of work. I'm not going to lie to you. It's going to be a lot of work getting in and closing deals but it's gonna be much easier than guessing who do I target, how do I target them, and why isn't my strategy working? So that was a lot of talk. We'll end here, because I really wanna go more into the specific questions that people might or might not have. Um, because for me personally, like that's this is all common knowledge. I'm not saying anything new, but the real value is at the end where we can customize it to what you guys are going through right now.